hello what is up everyone welcome back to a new video and in this video we'll see how we can create a themed icon and uh, also dynamic colors for our android app so first of all let's see what we are going to build so this is what we are going to build this app that has this dynamic color icon or themed icon that change its colors based on the wallpaper of the app like this and if i launch the app you can see here all these components uh, have colors have colors that are based or inherited from the wallpaper so if I change now the wallpaper into this green one and I open the app again as you can see they change the colors and also when I change the theme they also dynamically change so let's build that let's first start with the icon uh, the first thing we want to need uh, is that let's create uh, as you can see here I have this uh, new jetpack compose project let me remove the default mipmap folder and let's create a new one for the icon so I'm going to go to app new image assets and let me select the icon i want so i already downloaded this icon i can adjust its height like this and just click finish now we have an icon but it's not a themed icon yet so if i launch the app as you can see let me put this one that i'm working on right now it, it's not dynamic it didn't change its colors to make it change its colors let's come to this website which is the, uh, the underwood documentation adaptive icon section i'm going to put the link to this uh, section in the description let's copy this monochrome tag and let's go to mipmap ic launcher ic launcher in edpi version 26 and paste the tag here like this let's change the value of the drawable to be ic launcher foreground like this and let's copy this line and also do the same with ic launcher round which is this one that's it for the icon we're not going to do anything in ic launcher foreground let's run the app and yes it just changed its colors now it's based on the wallpaper so if i change this one the wallpaper it also changes let me bring back the green one because it looks cooler i guess yes uh, now let's make our app support dynamic colors right, right now it does not support dynamic colors so if i write any uh, if i create any button or anything it won't have dynamic colors based on the wallpaper to make it support those we're going to replace these colors we have in here and this theme uh, we have in here to the one that we can get from the material tree builder this one so first of all let's select a default color so let's select this green for example why do we select a default color because there are devices that do not support dynamic colors so those devices will have their components just in this green color like this their buttons and text fields they will have these colors in case they don't in case the device does not support dynamic colors but if if it does support dynamic colors then it will adjust its colors based on the wallpaper so after selecting the primary color let's download the the class or the the files we need let's download the jetpack compose this one the first one here it is we're going to unzip it and go to theme now we find color and theme dot key key which are just kotlin files let's open the first one here we have all these colors we're going to copy them like this and replace the default ones we have in our app like this the same goes for theme so let's open this theme let's copy all these colors which are the light colors and the uh, dark colors until here so we copy the dark colors and the light colors and replace them with what we already have we will have uh, two arrows in here just because the names are different so dark colors for the first one and light colors for the second one here actually right now we just made our app support dynamic colors that's it but just to, de to, to demonstrate that let's 
create something. Let's create this basic uh, Jetpack Compose uh, UI. A text field, some text here with a box, uh, a button, an elevated button, and then uh, and a floating action button. So we can also have uh, a look on how to create these components. So let's start with the text field. For the text field, we'll use a, a row. But first of all, everything is in a, is in a common. So every, all these components will be inside a common. So let's create a common. Common like this. This common will have a modifier. This modifier dot uh, fill max size, so it fills the entire screen size. We won't give it a background because surface already gives us the proper background color. So we'll just uh, make the elements inside it centered horizontal. So write horizontal alignment is equal to alignment dot center horizontal so we can have all these components horizontally centered uh, like this uh, now let's create uh, a row for the text field why are going why are we going to use a row because as you can see the button in the text are in a row uh, the row we need a modifier so modifier It, first of all, it will fill uh, the max width, so fill max width, and for the height, it will have 50 dp, so 50 dot dp, and uh, it will have rounded corners. So clip to give long, to give it rounded corners. We're going to write clip, rounded corner shape, and then we're going to give it the value of the uh, rounded corners. So it's 50 dot dp. So it has completely rounded corners uh, oops like this uh, after that we're going to give it a background color for the background color we're going to use the secondary container so background color to get so what is the secondary container first this is these are all the colors that we have and we are going to use this one for this text field which is the secondary container so to get that color we're going to write material theme dot color scheme dot secondary container or any other color we want in here i'm going to use secondary container and uh, then i'm going to make the elements inside this row uh, vertically alignment so uh, centered vertically i mean so these uh, these two components we're going to be vertically centered to do that i'm going to write vertical alignment is equal to alignment to center vertically like this and then I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to create the icon and the text inside this row. To do that, first of all, I need space at the start of the row. So to do that, I'm just going to create spacer. Modifier is equal to modifier dot width. I'm going to give it 80p space at the beginning or at the start of the row. And then I'm going to create my icon. So icon. Uh, I'm not going to use Painter, I'm instead going to use an image vector. To get the search icon, I'm going to write icons.rounded or default as we want or filled. I'm going to use rounded ones dot search like this. For the content description, I can just write search. And then the tint of the uh, icon is going to be on secondary container because now for the parent we had we had this secondary container color and on the child's their backgrounds are going to be on secondary so they are visible so tint is equal to material theme dot color scheme dot on secondary container which is this one and then i'm again going to create a space like this and then write my uh, text I can use a text uh, right here or just I'm going to use a basic text field so basic text field like this the value is going to be search and uh, on value change not like this on value change I'm going to give it an empty lambda for the text color I'm going to use text style text style and I'm going to write color 
Again, I'm going to use on secondary container color. So material theme dot color scheme dot on secondary container, which is this one. And I guess I've just created the search field. So let's see. I may have an error somewhere. Let me see where. Right here, I have this extra uh, bracket in there. I'm going to delete it and run the app. Here we have our uh, search field, but uh, I'm going also to uh, give it some space at the top, like this. I'm going to create some space at the top, and and I'm going to give this uh, row a, some padding, so ADP padding, so it doesn't completely get to the uh, edge width edges like this. Let's run. Uh, here should I should have height and uh, here I should use padding and yes now it looks cool uh, so let's now uh, create the box that has that text field so outside the row I'm going just to have a box a normal box and uh, I'm going to give it uh, for the uh, width, fill max width, but I'm actually going to give it 80% of the width is 0.8F, so it gets 80%. And uh, for the height, let's give it eight, so height, 200 dp height, and uh, and uh, it's also going to have rounded corners. So dot, oops, dot clip. Now the shape corners and it's going to have let's say 50.dp let me just format this and then uh, the background of this one is going to be the secondary container which is this one so background material theme dot color scheme dot secondary container and then i'm going to create a text inside this box and to make the text centered, I'm going to write, uh, I'm going to center it by writing uh, content alignment. So the, the content inside this box uh, will be centered. So alignment dot center like this. And I'm just going to create a text inside it. So text, the text will be just some text. And for the color of the text, Oops, color is going to be on secondary because the parent again is secondary container or oops, this one should, should be secondary actually. So this one was going to be on secondary, on secondary like this. And that's it. I've created the box. Let's see. That has a text. Yes, it is created. And now I'm going to create the buttons, but I want to have some space between all the components. So height, I'm going to give it 60 dp height. I'm going to paste this one a bunch of times because I will need it between every single component like this. So the next thing, the next thing I'm going to create is the normal button that we had. Uh, we had in the original project which is i'm going to create a normal button an elevated button and a floating action button so it starts with the normal button button uh, like this it will have a text inside it so text just click for example here and then we're, i'm not going to give it any color because it will get the proper color by default and we will give it uh, it's supposed to have color and then the second button is the elevated color so I'm going to write here ele elevated button this elevated button can have an icon inside it so let's write icon again I'm just going to use an image vector icons dot rounded dot play which is this one and in the content description, I could write play like this. 
and the last one is the floating action button floating action button uh, we won't have a text inside it instead i'm going to create an icon inside it like this the icon is going to be add for example and uh, here i can create a space between this icon and this uh, text inside the elevated icon uh, the elevated button so uh, with can create 8.dp like this and now let's run the app and yes as you can see we have these components and they have and they have colors based on the wallpaper so if i change the theme they also change if I change the wallpaper into this red one and then I launch the app everything inside here will also change so so this is how you can create an app that has dynamic colors and also a themed icon like this I will put this project on github and I will uh, put the link to it on the description and I'm going to, as I said, put the link, this link of this material builder and the adaptive icon section on the description. Uh, this is it for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in another one. Bye.